Hello there, this is Rom Wills coming back at you with yet another video. Twisted values in black relationships. And this is something I gotta speak on. Um, I touched on this a little bit in uh, the pay-per-view video I did recently. Uh, Super Brothers, the, a better understanding of successful black men. But uh, in that video I said I would do uh, a free video touching on the subject of just the twisted values you see when a woman or man or a woman it don't matter regardless of race when they have sex with someone is more than just pure lust it's more than just some animal lust right it's also a reflection of that person's values. Then I want you to think about what I just said. It's a reflection of that person's values. If you want to know what a man or a woman values, look at who they choose to have sex with. Look at who they're sexually attracted to. Now, I'll use myself as an example, right? Now, I'm known as the loafer brother. And, of course, for those loafer fans out there, I still, I got a video I still have to do, right? You know, I'm, I'm that lover of a fat ass or a sister, a sister with a fat ass. Mm, got some real thickness. When I say real thickness, I mean, like, small ways, big butt. You know, decent breast, this, 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 right? I'm a big fan of it, but... If someone were to observe the big, big butt sisters I actually go for, they would see a reflection of what I value. For example, I don't value hair weaves. I don't value hair weaves. Now, if I meet a woman and she has a weave and she real cool, I can still be cool with her. Uh, but it would, you know, from being cool to being in a relationship or me desiring her, even if she got a fat ass, that's a long trip. <laughs> that's that's a that's a long stretch but you know i value women who don't have weaves and preferably preferably where they had natural black women anyway you know if a, if it's a woman of another race hey you know still a certain look to them you know i value certain class values rom don't do ratchet so you're not going to see me, for the most part, talking with a ratchet type of woman unless it's a woman who was once ratchet and somehow managed, is managed to upgrade herself. But she still has those remnants of being ratchet, such as, you know, tattoos all over the place. But what I value is a certain look, a certain uh, level of class. And... You know, you could tell that with me. But what we have overall, we're not talking about Rom right now. What we have overall in black relationships, and this is the thing that all the relationship experts, the panelists, uh, everyone who's making money off this uh, black relationship industrial complex, we really have to look at the values. And the values are twisted. They twist it, you know. Now, even though I've gone on record, I've gone on record as saying the thug thing or the bad boy thing is overrated. When I say overrated, basically I'm saying they're not getting all the play. But they're getting enough play. They get more than enough play. Now, yeah, there's some guys out there who are diametrically opposite to these guys, and they players too, some of the biggest players. But if we want to look at the mass, the, you know, the community as a whole, not individuals, but as a whole, we have to, we have to acknowledge that many times, especially uh, with black women, the guys they're going for are not the guys that they say they want publicly. If you take an honest look at the men who are having multiple children, 
Because that's they, they, you can't measure who's getting sex better than that. You, you have a living, breathing example of, the, of it, of what's happening when they pop out a baby. And then when you have guys routinely saying, well, I got six other kids. Or I got seven other kids or 15 other kids. And I've known some dudes who got multiple children like that. But probably on their own didn't have a pot to piss in. And in fact, in many cases, are living off the woman. That's the thing. The only thing they bring into the woman is a hard dick. That's a twisted value. And the reason why I say it's a twisted value, because you basically have non-productive men, just breeders, basically, taking getting a lion's share of the women out here. I mean, we, we just got to be honest with it. We, 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 have to, we have to be honest, you know. Many men don't have multiple children. In the black community, you have, what, 48% of men who don't have children. And then out of that 52%, many men at most have one child. And I'm going to say presumably one child because of the phenomena of paternity fraud, which I've gone over before. All right. So the number of black men who actually have children might actually be lower, but might be it's probably in a 50 percent range. Let's just be real. It might be it's probably in a 50 percent range, maybe even 60 percent range, because only a small percentage of men who are not productive, who are just going around having babies. Are monopolizing many of the women. In fact, that's a hustle for some lower class men. They'll have a baby with a woman, and then they always have a place to stay. And basically, they live in a de facto polygamous life. But in a true uh, polygamous situation, the man would be expected to take care of the wife and the children, all the wives and the children. Uh, we don't have that for the most part, except in some. Uh, tiny subcultures in in this country right but and i'm saying you know i'm talking about this because the men the men who should be the ones doing the lion's share of reproducing the men who are productive members of society are the ones who are shunned the most in black relationships they are the ones who are primarily non-select now, I describe the select men as those Mr. Goodbar types, you know, the ones that women consider sexy. And even though I had said something different years ago, that was more or less a bias on my part saying that they were more productive. But as a group, no, they're not. No, they are, they are not. I'm, that's something different now I'm saying. And I know I, y'all probably didn't hear me say it on a video or something, but it was an idea I had like back in the day. But that was a bias, uh, you know, just from my personal experience and my peer group. But when I expand that more, when I do more research, <laughs> the guys that are at the top of the sexual hierarchy in a black community are not the most productive. You know, and yeah, you have some guys, some men that are labeled masked men or status men, but the status has to be extremely high. Their status has to be extremely high. And um, even in those cases, some of those men who do have that high status are still not getting the lion's share of the women. And often, uh, many times when they are getting some women, often the women, they're more attracted to that status than to the actual man. So it's twisted to me, ultimately, when I talk about twisted values, whereas most of the men who are speaking up about relating to black women, about issues relating to black women, um, talking about what's going on with black women, are not the bums. Are not the guys who are sleeping on somebody's couch. These are men who do what men in any culture are supposed to do. They go out, they work, they're productive. They have their own places. They have careers, they're educated. Yet, they're the ones who are filling up these forms. 
they're the ones going to these dating coaches. They're the ones spending a lot of money. And when it should be the other way around. And I'm going to say should. I'm going to use the word should. Because any group, any community, the productive men should be the ones mating. The smartest men should be the ones with the lion's share of the mating. You know, uh, I have a... I have many mentors. One mentor was someone who studied uh, cultures in um, Africa uh, before, um, you know, that were able to resist European and Arab infiltration and intervention, right? And how they carry things. And he was telling me about one group where only the top 12% of men uh, who were productive and morally were allowed to imprint women. And this set up a, a better society. But see, in the black community, the men who are reproducing the most are not the best of men. They're not productive. When I say best of men, I ain't talking about their, their character or anything, or well, their moral character, but sometimes that's the case too. I'm talking about men who are going to protect, who are going to build, you know, who are going to carry themselves as men, who will most likely, if they had a connection to the community, would be the ones to invest back in the community. But because of the twisted values that we have, which I'm going to be honest, um, I'm more and more. I'm starting to believe there was an outside factor involved in that, in switching those values around. But, you know, to talk about that, I would have to talk about the role of propaganda, media, and all of that. But that plays a factor. But right now we have twisted values. There's it, it, no way that a man who has an education or has a trade, um, has money in the bank, behaves responsibly. It's no way a man like that should really have trouble in women unless the women do not value that man. And I want y'all to think about that. Is there a real value there? Or is the value, you know, the value just comes once that woman has been kicked to the curb or dogged enough by the low, lower level men that she is valuing. I want y'all to think about that. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.